All right, so back in June, I made a video about why I ended up leaving my job at Amazon. And I didn't really tell you guys all the details that went into why I decided to leave. I sort of just was pretty hand wavy. And today I sort of want to talk a little bit more about why I made the decision to leave Amazon so that you guys have a little bit more clarity. And so there's a lot of speculation actually around like why I ended up leaving. And I actually ended up putting Pip in the title of the video, which was a mistake. And I'm going to talk about that. But for now, I sort of want to back up in time a little bit and talk about when I first started joining Amazon. All right, so backing up a little bit, I ended up getting my offer from Amazon back in November of 2020, which was pretty much peak COVID. And it was at this point that I decided, you know, that I want to go work at Amazon. I want to see what it was like working at a larger company and I accepted their offer. So unfortunately, I can't really tell you guys that much about the work that I was doing at Amazon due to an NDA. But what I can tell you is that I was doing a lot of front end work and I was mostly doing things in React. Why was I doing front end? Mostly just because that's what my team needed. I'm primarily a back end developer. I've done full stack in the past, but nowadays I'm pretty much mostly a back end developer. But I was doing a lot of front end work because that was sort of what my team needed at the time. And so I volunteered to just help and that was what ended up being most helpful. So I want to stress this because I think this is pretty important. And my experience at Amazon was very positive. And I actually really loved the team that I was on. I thought the product that I was working on specifically was pretty interesting and cool. I also felt like I had a lot of mentors on my team, which was really great. And I remember there was one person in particular, his name was Brad, and he was in L7, I think, if I remember correctly. And he was like just like a really good resource for me, taught me a lot. And, and I felt like I learned a lot from Brad. I also really enjoyed my manager. And I had a really great relationship with my manager, Angie, while I was at Amazon. And I really had no problems while I was there. And so it's kind of funny to me because I look at Blind and I would look, or I guess I would look at Amazon's Blind, or I would look at Blind in general, or any posts online. And I feel like Amazon gets a really, really bad rap. And I guess I chalk up a lot of that to be the fact that I think Amazon's over a million people as a company. And at that point, I feel like I imagine it's really hard to run a company of that size, make sure things are uniform and people have the same experience and a good experience. And that's sort of how I chalk it up, or I guess how I expect people to have a bad opinion of it. And I also think that some people just like to complain online. And I think that mostly bad news circulates more than good news, unfortunately. So I think that's sort of how people get that perspective of what Amazon is. I also think that blind is just extremely toxic and almost everything on a blind is toxic, but there are some needles in the haystack where you'll find a post that's like really helpful or really good, but the majority of it is just toxicity, unfortunately. And so even within the first few months at Amazon, I actually had a discussion with my manager, Angie, and my rating, uh, I guess like my performance rating was trending up. And that was just meaning that it was going in a good direction. And so I was going to actually have a conversation with my skip manager because of that, because I think I don't know if that like fast tracks you to promo or just says that you're like going in a good direction. But nonetheless, we actually basically had planned on me going up for promotion. I think it was in the Q4 of 2021. So basically a year after I would have been at the company. So all of that is to say that I was basically working for Amazon. It was going well and I was working remotely from Michigan. I was not relocating to Seattle. That was the plan. They wanted me to go to Seattle. But at that point, COVID was you know crazy and rampant everywhere in the world. So they didn't know when people were going to be back in the office. And so there were no like plans for me to move to Seattle at that point in time. But there was an expectation that I would eventually relocate to Seattle once everything with COVID had settled down. So fast forward to February now. This is about four months into my tenure at Amazon. Uh, I was in Michigan at the time. And unfortunately, I got a call from my dad saying that my grandfather had passed away. And this was a really hard thing for me. I think this was really hard for everyone in my family. Um, you know, this was really hard for me specifically, personally. and all the stuff with COVID just made it that much worse. Like I couldn't be with my family physically. His funeral ended up getting delayed actually like weeks because all the stuff with COVID was crazy and people couldn't get flights or people were worried about flying to Texas to be there for the funeral. And so everything was really just a mess. And I, I think this weighed heavily on me, understandably, I would hope for a variety of reasons, but obviously the first and foremost, just being that I had lost someone who I loved and cared about deeply and was a, a huge part of my life and my family. And also I felt this, like horrible sense of guilt. I just felt like I wasn't there. I couldn't be there to console my dad. I couldn't be there for my family. I couldn't be there to help. I couldn't be there for my grandma. And it was just like a horrible time to, to have to say goodbye to someone like that. And it was really just an awful experience. And my grandpa really was this incredible person that I had the unbelievable pleasure of knowing. And I'm so thankful that I had him in my life for the, all the years that I did and all the things that he taught me. Um, he was really just an incredible person. And it, it I'm so lucky to have had him in my life. And I think, you know, there are so many things I think about when I think about him, but I really think about how he was so smart and he was so kind. And I remember 
he he studied math in college and he he ended up getting a job at IBM and he turned it down and it you know this is like straight math and puzzles and crazy interviews that he had to do to get this job and everyone wanted it and hundreds of people applied and he was the only one who got it and he turned it down and I thought that that was pretty amazing and you know you talk about different decisions in your life that lead you different ways and so in my head I'm thinking there's this one decision where he could have been working at IBM and then he ended up going and joining the Navy and so this sort of I guess leads into the other thing that I think about when I think about my grandpa and how kind he was and when he joined the Navy he ended up going to Vietnam and my grandfather was actually a prisoner of war in Vietnam he was shot down and he was captured and he actually was kept at a place and as a prisoner uh, at a place called the Hanoi Hilton. So you guys can look it up. And it's this famous prisoner of war camp, unfortunately, where, you know, terrible things happened. And he was there for almost six years of his life. And so he was a prisoner of war for six years. You know, my my dad didn't know if he was alive. My My grandmother, his wife, did not know if he was alive. And so, I mean, that's a whole different kind of crazy and insane and sad and hard. And so I'm always amazed at how he was able to just come back to life or normal life, I should say, and not complain, never ask why me and not talk about how things were so hard. He sort of just picked himself up, dusted himself off and just kept going on with life, which I thought was amazing. And he didn't hold any resentment in his heart for anyone. Um, he was always kind to all kinds of people. If he didn't know you, if he knew you, he became friends with everyone. And I always think about him a lot in my life, but I definitely always think about him when I'm going through something that I think is hard. Because I think no matter, you know, anything that I go through in my life, knock on wood, you know, I, I cannot imagine is going to, you know, hold a candle to the things that he had to go through. And so losing my grandfather was something that was really hard for me. And that was one of the reasons why I thought maybe I shouldn't be at Amazon anymore, because I didn't want to be away from my family when things like that were unfortunately happening. So now fast forward, to, I think it was three weeks after my grandfather's funeral, my sister had a medical emergency, unfortunately. And my sister at the time was living in New York. She was here the whole pandemic. So she's just in New York City. And again, I was not there. I was in Michigan. And unfortunately, just by chance, a lot of my family was still in Texas being with my grandma and you know just helping her through that tough time. And so she had a seizure. And to be honest with you, I didn't really want to talk about this almost a year ago now because I didn't really feel like it was my place, but my sister ended up talking about it uh, publicly more recently. So I felt like it was okay for me to now mention how this, you know, sort of hung on me and made it tough for me to sort of commit to going to a place like Seattle when I knew all these things were happening across the country with my family. And so for my sister, again, it was just this horrible thing where I felt, I, I mean, obviously I was worried about her and I was really scared and I didn't know what was going to happen or if she was healthy or what. And like, thankfully she's fine. And you know, that she had never had a seizure before. She hasn't had one since, thankfully. But again, it was just one of those things where I was like, do I really want to move all the way across the country and be away from my family? And again, I had that sense of guilt where I was like, my sister just had this horrible thing happen. She's, you know, in danger, basically. She's been rushed to the hospital. And, you know, if I have to get on a plane right now, the fastest that I could be there in is like four hours. And that felt horrible. Like, I just felt so bad that that was what I was like willingly signing up for that. I was like going to just be like, yeah, all these things are happening and I'm going to just go across the country. And that really didn't sit well for me. And I felt horrible for my sister too, because I mean, it was all the stuff with COVID. So like, even if I was there, I couldn't be in the hospital with her because of COVID, but she was just alone going through something that was really horrible. And I wish I could have been there for her. And I've talked to her more recently about it and I've apologized and I don't know, just, it was really bad. So from these two experiences, I knew that I didn't want to go to Seattle. And I've always talked about moving somewhere else and being on my own. And I've lived in New York my whole life. I should live somewhere else. But after these two things, I really decided, no, nah, I think for right now, I can just travel to places. I don't really need to move super far away from my family. Uh, and after these two things happened, I really thought, I just want to be able to be there when things happen. And so because of this, I ended up telling my manager, I don't think this is going to work. Like, I don't think I'm going to come to Seattle. So I'd like to start talking about being remote, if that would be okay, what that would look like. And at this point, it wasn't fully accepted, I think, for people to be remote. If I remember correctly, it was like org by org, or there was some guidance for like, eventually I would still have to go. But she was saying that she was fine with me staying remote. She was happy with my work. She thought I worked well remotely. I already was remote. So she had no problems with it. But being the person I am, 
I think it's better to have options than not. And so I started deciding, okay, I'm going to look internally at Amazon for jobs in New York. And I'm also going to start interviewing outside of Amazon just because why not, right? I don't think having more data points can hurt me. It can only help it. So if I find another opportunity outside of Amazon that I like more, I can take. That ended up being the case, but that was sort of what was going through my head. And so I basically decided because of these two events, I'm going to start finding a way to prioritize to be closer to my family. And so I want to clarify that I was not pipped. And I think it was wrong of me to put that in the title of the video. And I want to apologize for that. And I didn't remove it from the title either because I felt like by me doing that, it was sort of me like trying to hide a mistake that I made. And I didn't really want to do that. So I kind of left it there as a way to just say, I guess I didn't own up to it in a comment or I didn't put it anywhere, but I'm saying that that was wrong of me and I shouldn't have done that. That was clickbait. And I'm going to hopefully be better than that going forward. And I'm going to try and not do things like that to, I guess, increase my viewership or increase my click-through rate because it's not really necessary. And I think if I could just put out good content and I can upload consistently, hopefully that's enough to get good content out there and to, to grow an audience and to get better viewership, et cetera. But I do want to say that I wasn't pipped for, I guess, just to, to clarify that. And also because there was a post on blind on the Amazon blind about me, which I thought was kind of funny. And I, you know, I don't have access to that channel anymore in blind, but I thought it was hilarious when I did see that. And I just kind of read some of the comments and some of the comments were actually from my coworkers who worked with me backing me up saying that I wasn't pipped, but I guess I just found that kind of funny. And so I guess finally to wrap up this video, I just wanted to say that I didn't talk about any of this stuff back then because of the fact that it was so new and it was so fresh and like, I didn't really want to talk about those things that I didn't want to think about them, right? Like I kind of wanted to just move on and I'm, I'm someone who's like that, generally speaking. I don't really like to discuss things. I like to sort of just keep it inside and, and then move on and process it on my own. But I figured that now, you know, it's almost a year later, I feel like it's okay to talk about it now and I'm okay and I'm comfortable doing that. And I also think that as this channel continues to grow, I want to try and let you guys in more on what's going on in my life. And I've always tried to do that on my channel. Like I've always tried to upload good things and bad things and tell you guys about things that are happening, but it's never been so personal uh, in my life. And so it's sort of been like a hard thing for me to decide and understand like what are things that I should talk about on YouTube and what are things that I should keep personal to me and private to me. Um, and so I didn't really know how to navigate that back then. And, and then, you know, I guess additionally with my sister's thing, especially, I didn't really want to out her for something like that. I didn't know if she felt comfortable talking about that. I didn't know if she wanted to tell people about the things that had happened. But once she ended up talking about it more publicly, you know, now I feel a little bit more comfortable shedding light on, on what was going on and, and the decisions that I made. So that's pretty much all I wanted to say in this video. I hope that this sort of cleared up the reason why I ended up leaving Amazon or, or the reasons that contributed to me leaving. Um, and I do want to say too, just as like a final note, I, I feel unfortunately very validated in the decision that I made to come back to New York because now I am in New York and something actually unfortunately happened at the very end of March this year with my family. Uh, that was a med another medical emergency, very sadly, and I was able to be there, you know, in 30 minutes, I think. I was able to take a car immediately from the city to the hospital. Um, you know, it's an unfortunate way to sort of like verify they made the right decision, but I feel, I feel happy that I was able to be there because that was sort of what I was missing back when these two other things happened last year. Hopefully that sort of clarifies why I ended up leaving Amazon last year and answers any of the questions that you guys might have had. And... I'll talk to you guys soon.